Hello and welcome to today's video. So at long last I've got round to pulling out all my vintage Georges Simon and paperbacks and we're going to be having a look through the pans, the numerous Penguin books and a couple of others that I've got as well. So without further ado, sit back, relax and let's get to it. Georges Simenon was born on the 13th of February 1903 and was a Belgian writer. Simenon was one of the most prolific writers of the 20th century, capable of writing 60 to 80 pages per day. His au revoir includes nearly 200 novels, over 150 novellas, several autobiographical works, numerous articles and scores of pulp novels written under more than two dozen pseudonyms. Altogether, about 550 million copies of his works have been printed. He is best known for his 75 novels and 28 short stories featuring Commissioner Maigret. The first novel in the series, Piet le Leton, was serialised in 1930 and appeared in book form in 1931. The last one, Maigret and Monsieur Charles, was published in 1972. The Maigret novels were translated into all major languages and several of them have been turned into films, TV series and radio plays. Simonon underwent surgery for a brain tumour in 1984 and made a good recovery, but in subsequent years, however, his health worsened. He gave his last televised interview in December 1988. He died in his sleep of natural causes on the night of the 4th of September 1989 in Le Soir, Switzerland. The majority of his novels and most of the novellas were first published in paperback by Penguin Books, who still publish them to this day, albeit in new modern classics editions with modern translations. However, some UK publishers picked up the scraps that Penguin didn't publish, and I have some of these to show you today, alongside many of the Penguin editions. OK, so we start off with this one, The Man Who Watched the Trains Go By. And this is actually a pan book, but when I checked my collection, I was surprised to see that this was actually the earliest Simonon that I've got. And it's pan main series number 26. This is a particularly nice copy of this one. And this is dated 1948, that particular one. And the next one is also in pan, and this is May Gray to the Rescue. This is pan 138. It's got a one and six British cover price. Not the greatest of copies this, but I don't mind. This is 1950, so it's still a 70 year old uh, edition. And then we come on to the very first one as published by Penguin. And it was two books, uh, Battle of Nerves and At the Gay Moulin. This is Penguin main series 739. Now they published their very first one here in uh, 1950, translated by Geoffrey Sainsbury. There are a little biography of uh, Simonon on the back. And uh, yeah, the Penguin editions are very, very handsome. They really went to town with him. I wish I had a few in slightly better condition, but like a lot of the classic penguin crime, um, it tends to get read and re-read several times and consequently finding them in nice condition is tough. Um, the next one then was Penguin 8, 826, May Gray Travels South. And pretty much, 1952 this one, pretty much his entire output was eventually published by Penguin, although I've not quite got it all. I've got maybe, well, over half of it, that's for certain. Uh, 827 then, May Gray sits it out. And these were all sort of published in uniform um, editions and they were uh, numerically numbered with the Penguin series. This is a better copy of 828. This is a much more robust copy of into latitudes and this is also quite a long one for uh, a maigre if only they were all like that <laughs> eight two nine havoc by accident and it's funny that um 
these books. I mean, Penguin have, have recently re-released them uh, with new translations, and they're really handsome editions. And uh, on top of that, the new TV series as well, with uh, Rowan Atkinson as May Gray, has proved to be very popular. So uh, I think he's certainly had a bit of a revival. And I've been asked to do this particular video, similar in vintage paperback, for quite a while now. So I'm glad I finally got around to pulling them all out. It's just a shame I there's a few of the penguin ones that I am still missing, but not to worry. Um, it's just ha happy to share what I've got here. Um, so number 830 then, Escape in Vain. This is a nice one, 855. This is two books again, The Man from Everywhere and New Haven Diet. And this is, uh, I think perhaps they put the two books in or two novellas in effect. 1952, just to bulk up the size of the uh, the actual Penguin edition. This is 856, another doubler, Crime in Holland and a face for a clue. Let's put that first stack over there. 857 then, Lost Moorings. These crime ones, I mean, they're just so so distinctive aren't they they really really are you just want to dive in <laughs> on the danger line 856 still 1952 now we move away because we've got another pound one here magnet of doom this is a, a non may gray and uh it said Simonon was published by a few other publishers, but predominantly in the UK it was only Penguin. Um, and there's an odd digit, which we'll see in a minute. But Magnet of Doom. Nice copy of this one from uh, the Pan Edition from 1956. So we, as we're going through these, they are in a UK published order. Here is the uh, the digit one. This um, is not dated, but I believe it's 1957. Um, I've checked it out against some of my other digit books, and that's where I believe it falls. The ones pre-100 are about 1956 when the imprint started. Digit were part Brown Watson. There we are. And that's uh, Strangers in the House. Very, very nice copy of that one. Then we're back to another pan, which is Girl in Waiting. Chit of a Girl. Not quite sure what a chit of a girl is, but... Um, Maybe someone could advise, because I've always wanted to know. This is a pretty nice copy of this one. And this one's dated 1957 again, alongside the uh, the digit one there. Now we're back on to the penguins. So May Gray's mistake. And the numbering's jumped up to 1222. Price is 2 and 6. These are 1950. Three. This is a 1953 penguin. Is that 53 or 58? Published in Penguin in 1958. Okay. Next, we're uh, back on to Penguin again with Penguin 1222, May Gray's Mistake. So these are some of the more contemporary ones now. So published in hardback in 53, Penguin edition here, 1958. So once again, chronologically, this is the correct one. 1363, May Gray's Revolver. This is uh, moving on a little bit further again in time. 1959 for May Gray's Revolver. And we've got another pan, Strange Inheritance. Rex cover, Outcast through a Legacy of Hate. So non May Gray, but there he is on the back there. Look at that. One of the, the most fascinating books he has written, BBC Broadcast. And I think we tend to forget just how prolific Simonon was. It just, he was a machine, wasn't he, this guy? Uh, My Friend May Gray, 1419. 1959 again. Now we've got the last non-Penguin edition, which is a uh, four square, four square 191. 
Meg Ray goes to school. Bit of a beaten up old copy of this one. But my four squares aren't in the greatest of shape. And when they turn up, they're always a bit hammered, to be honest. But chronologically, this is where this one fits in. And he's dated 1960, this four square edition. So that one goes right in there in all its diabolical condition. So now we've got Meg Ray's first case. So this is Penguin 1594. A young May Gray gets his chance. Published in Penguins in 1961. Nice pile over here. So slight change in cover design now. We're, uh, we've moved ahead a few years. This is Penguin 1679. And this is um, the cover that was designed by Ron Mar uh, Marber, the Marber Grid. Um, sometimes if the designer is credited they do pop it on the inside cover so we will check all of these as we go along so this cover was designed by Edwin Taylor and it was published in 1962 1680 Maigret has scruples so I think these are a bit more interesting than the plain penguin ones. So you've got like the the scales of justice there, maybe like a a seesaw, the man and the woman on, and you could imagine May Gray with his hands behind his back holding a a box of matches there. Great, great cover. And uh, this was also designed by Edwin Taylor, and also from 1962. Lovely stuff. May Gray and the Reluctant Witnesses. I'm not quite sure what the uh, the spanner is doing. No doubt it uh, features in the book. Cover designed by Hacken Lindstrom. Also 1962. Now this next one is a penguin one, but it's not penguin crime. It's uh, called Striptease. It's published in Penguin Fiction, Fiction Orange, 1853. So it's a non-May Gray title, 1963. And this one cover design by Romick Marber, who is a great, great cover designer, although that's not typical of his work. But uh, very nice to see all the same. And this next one is very, very similar. It's in the Penguin Orange. The Little Man from Archangel. This is 1854, the very next book chronologically. Let's check who the designer was again, see if it mentions it. Doesn't look like they're gonna mention it. Um, very unusual for Penguin. Ah, oh, that's because it's on the back cover and it was Ron McMarber again. <laughs> So there we are. We were looking when we didn't need to. Very nice there with a little sort of background of postage stamps. Mm. He was great, wasn't he? So May Gray and the 100 Gibbets. <laughs> it's got an actual photo cover here with a French commissionaire. Excellent. So a nice copy of this one. Cover designed by Geoffrey Martin. And the photograph is a BBC TV photograph. So this is from one of the first TV adaptions or adaptations rather. And that, I uh, forget the artist who played, the actor who played May Gray, but that's where that's from. So it's like an early TV tie-in. As I guess is this, May Gray at the crossroads. This is Crime 2000, C2028, and that was 2025. And I'm guessing this is in the same sort of thing, yeah. Cover design, Jeffrey Martin from the BBC photograph again. Very bold and distinctive. It's a later one again. Crime 2566 in the main series, so it's a C. Colour cover, The Train. It's so a cover photograph by Michael Buscelli. So it's not a May Gray. Hmm. 
there we are. So published in hardback in 1964 in the UK. Um, Penguin got around to this in 1967, so they were publishing his contemporary works. May Gray and the Saturday Caller. Penguin 2638. 1968. Couldn't see a cover designer on this one. So I don't know. Don't know. Might have been a, just a Penguin House designer at this point. The Door. And this is a more typographical cover. 2680. Two seven nine six May Gray sets a trap. Covered by John Hughes, it says there. So we did actually get a credit. Nineteen sixty eight again still. May Gray on the defensive. Two eight three one. Cover again by John Hughes. Nineteen sixty eight. So that's my run of Simonon's in vintage paperback. So a couple of years ago, the Penguin Collector Society did publish this, May Gray and the Penguin Books. And this does look at the uh, full history of May Gray and Simonon in Penguin. And they released a lot of the books in omnibus editions. But of course, my cutoff point is about 1970. So uh, I, uh, I haven't got the omnibuses, but all these lovely classic 60s editions are there, including the ones I don't have. <laughs> and it tells you um, about the reprints and who the designers were things like that which is brilliant list of where they've all come from you get a real history of uh, the character and the author there's the first 10 simonins there and uh, there's a great article by james Mackay. there we are um, and he gives the complete sort of relationship between Simon and uh, Penguin. And this one's got an introduction by uh, novelist Julian Barnes. So if you are thinking of um, collecting the vintage May Gray books or Simon and in general, um, this one with his Penguin appearances, which are very, very numerous, as you can see, um, would be essential to you to track down. And you can get that from the uh, Penguin Collectors Society. So there you go. I hope you've enjoyed looking through my collection of vintage Simon and paperbacks. Certainly this has been a long time coming and I hope it didn't disappoint. If you have enjoyed today's video, do please give it a thumbs up. Do please hit that subscribe button for regular vintage paperback content. And I'll look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.